At Shavuot just over a week ago, our colleague and friend Rabbi Seth Gorin, the CEO of Hillel Ontario, taught us the following text from the Midrash, from Breshit Rabbah. It goes as follows. Rabbi Yaakov bar Acha said Rabbi Nehemia was in a dispute with his fellow rabbis who were discussing the blessing Hamotzi Lecha Min Ha'aret, the one who brings forth bread from the earth, praising God for this action. The problem is, of course, that bread does not just magically grow forth from the ground. Rabbi Nehemia suggested that perhaps this meant that God brought forth bread from the earth in the past, as per the book of Numbers, where we find ourselves right now. This was namely in the Garden of Eden, when bread would grow from the ground for Adam until he sinned. The rabbis, however, say that Hamotzi Lecha Min Ha'aretz indicates that God will bring forth bread from the earth in the future, as per the book of Exodus. In that far-off aspirational messianic era, bread will indeed grow, for, grow as a finished product from the ground, the rabbis say, quoting the psalmist, Yehi pisat ba'aretz, there will be grain upon the earth, bread from grain upon the earth. So you might be thinking, what does this conversation over blessing bread, like we do at all our meals, such as Shabbat, have to do with anything? Rabbi Gorin's point was that partnerships between heaven and earth or the people on them are not simply created from scratch. They take principal time, effort, and contributions the same way that bread is a process of collecting the ingredients, mixing, kneading, rising, baking, and so on. With this in mind, we acknowledge that it can feel like and has been a lonely and isolating time to be a Jew in this world, whether in Israel or here in the diaspora. Where are our friends? Where are our partners we have been asking? After learning with Rabbi Gorin, and in light of this current Jewish isolation, I too reflected on different ideas of what allyship what partnership can look like for us right now and what its goals might be, inspired, as always, by Torah, including Parashat Beha'alotcha. I want to premise all of this by clarifying that it is firstly important to know when to move and when to stay put. Early in Baha'u'llah Cha, we are in the chapter in Numbers, chapter um, chapter nine, which Eliana chanted from, we read. Alpi Adonai Yisu Bene Yisrael ve Alpi Adonai Yachanu. At the command of God, they, the people of Israel, traveled, and at God's command, they encamped. In other words, there is something to be said about knowing when to engage and when to refrain using our best instincts and sources of guidance. We know that it is not always easy or even safe or healthy to try and talk to partners who, even with good intentions, don't or can't talk to us or won't work with us. On the contrary, that doesn't make them true partners or allies in the first place. And so we set a boundary and continue to navigate the wilderness. So what can we work with? From where can we begin to bake this nourishing bread of partnership and allyship? Number one, it is important to name the issue of anti-Semitism for exactly what it is. In Baha'u'llah Tcha, we learn that God speaks to Moses straightforwardly as it is written, Pe'el pe adaber bo umal'er v'lo v'chidot. With him, with Moses, God says, I speak mouth to mouth, plainly and not in riddles. As Rashi will elaborate, this highlights the clear nature of the communication between Moses and the divine, there were no obscurities, no ambiguity, no hidden meaning. In that context, it warms my heart sincerely when we see the example set by letters like the extraordinary one you may have seen circulated by a coalition of Christian ministers here in the GTA, an excerpt on this subject which reads, as Christian ministers in the greater Toronto area, 
We are deeply troubled by the recent events of hatred and mistreatment towards the Jewish community. We want to express our deep concern and unequivocal condemnation of anti-Semitism in its various forms. We believe that every person, including those in the Jewish community, should be treated with dignity, respect, and unconditional regard, and that hate directed toward your community is unacceptable. Put differently, of course, other types of hatred, whether it's homophobia, Islamophobia, or what have you, are wrong. But when the windows of a Jewish school are shot up or Jewish-owned businesses vandalized, it does not feel like too much to ask that anti-Semitism is called out specifically and acknowledged on its own terms, even whilst hatred and prejudice of all kinds are condemned in the same breath. The second part we must then consider is to join together and build bridges as we hope and pray for that day in which bread will burst forth from the earth. We can look towards the words of our Haftarah that we just heard from the book of Zechariah, chapter 2. On that day, Many nations will attach themselves to God and become God's people, and the divine will dwell in your midst. Whilst our commentators, such as Abarbanel and the Malbim, generally agree that this indicates the joining of idolaters to the people of Israel, turning away from their old ways and towards the path of God, we can perhaps take a slightly different perspective on this idea. The book of Malachi, another of our prophets like Zechariah, teaches us that when those who revere God talk to one another, it is noted and heard by the Holy One. Perhaps those same Christian ministers hit the nail on the head when they said again in their letter, we recognize that our faith communities share common roots, values, and belief in a loving and compassionate God. We can subsequently pose the question, What if we were able to take such an approach with those whom we can consider as partners and allies? What if we, in pursuit of a society free from hatred and affliction and strife, to paraphrase our Siddur, were able to turn towards our friends and allies, believe that we were in the pursuit of our mutual sustenance, so to speak, something holier than ourselves, and could find in our joining together that abiding presence of God. How does that notion change our goals, if at all? How does it shift the needle in potentially positive ways? Which begs the question, what might our goals be to begin with? Perhaps one of them is ultimately to work towards healing. Towards the end of Baha'u'llah Tcha, Moses cries out those famous words on behalf of his sister Miriam, beseeching God, El na rafan Allah, O God, please heal her now. We should take a step back and look at why, according to the parasha, this healing was necessary to begin with, which was that both Moses and Aaron had spoken ill of the non-Jewish woman that Moses had chosen to take as a wife. Moses offers his short, sharp prayer. It is not wordy or flowery or full of details. Rashi, our ever insightful sage, teaches that this was in order to prevent Moses from facing a false accusation from the people of Israel, um, that Moses would pray extensively for his sister, but not for them too. Rashi also states that this form of prayer is a simple but effective lesson in the way we conduct our social lives, that we should first honor the person that we're talking to and then ask the favor. We can treat our partners and allies as such and look for allies and partners who will treat us as such in turn. Subsequently, we can glean that nugget of wisdom from our tradition and further learn that we must always take the higher ground by acting in the opposite manner of those who would wish to hurt us. That we, in our quest for healing, should act so that we feel confident and comforted that we have not given in to vitriol or prejudicial language. 
our Torah will then come to teach us that words are one piece, though actions are another. Our parasha in, chapter, in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10 reads, and on your joyous occasions, your fixed festivals and new moon days, you shall sound the trumpets over your burned offerings and your sacrifices of well-being. There shall be a reminder of you before your God. I, Adonai, am your God. Whilst the shofar is a symbol more commonly associated with the high holy days, of course, it is, according to Baha'u'llah Cha, both the sound that was blasted to assemble the Israelites and the sound which would then direct them forwards and set them into motion militarily. It was equally sounded beyond Simchatem, at our sacred joyous occasions as a reminder to God of our covenant and our responsibility towards God as a result. Quoting Rabbi Kerry Olitsky, she points out that indeed, the shofar was sounded to announce the presence of an enemy and gather the Israelites against them. Yet she also notes that the power of the shofar is that it acts as a motivator calling the people to come together as one on the spiritual level. Resounding in our ears, the shofar then calls us to consider the right path forward, one which bolsters our strength and allows us to look ahead with optimism. Put differently, again taken from the words of the letter from our Christian minister friends, if threats and intimidation towards your community continue, please know that we are committed to be people of action who will advocate for your safety and appeal to God and the governing authorities to ensure your right to safely gather safely for worship and learning. In short, an additional goal may be a commitment on the part of ourselves and our allies to hear the shofar's call to action as we venture towards a shared future of holiness, wholeness, and happiness. Parashat Beha'alot Cha takes its name from the beginning words of our portion as we just spoke about with Rabbi Splansky, which speak of the lighting of the, of the menorot of the temple, which the Levites would perform. As we conclude, as we dream and pray for that redemptive day in which bread will come forth fully formed from the earth, we can look at some guiding lights both behind and ahead of us. We can call to mind, of course, the small miracle that was marching with 50,000 of our nearest and dearest at the UJA Walk for Israel last Sunday, two Sundays ago, my uh, apologies, not all of them Jewish. We can reflect upon the triumph that was our interfaith concert at Timothy Eaton Memorial Church, who have been wonderful partners to us for many months now, this past Tuesday. The sound of 120 plus voices from choirs of all backgrounds was, like the shofar blast, the sound of pure hope and unity. Some of you may also have heard, but remarkably there's a new initiative underway known as the Indigenous Embassy. It is, per their press release, the international project and international project of our First Nations brethren from all around the world, including Canada. That is exactly what it sounds like. An embassy located in Jerusalem aimed at sending a strong message of solidarity. It is the brainchild of these proudly Zionist indigenous leaders who hold strong in their belief that the Jewish people are indigenous to the land of Israel and admire Israel as an in inspirational expression of self-determination in ancestral homelands. Rabbi Splansky, together with Stephen and Gillian Bookman, our interfaith chairs, attended an informational evening at the Israeli consulate just over a week ago. And then with, with Rabbi Splansky's permission, we can also share some seeds that are currently being planted, the wheat that we hope will give rise to bread. The example being that our congregant, Wendy Eisen, introduced um, our congregation to her friend, Razil Raza, a fearless Pakistani-Canadian Muslim activist, a real partner devoted to Israel and the Jewish people. 
and the idea in formation is a dance event for the city of Toronto in the lead up to the October 7 anniversary and using the slogan sprung from the Nova Festival, we will dance again. And finally, I hope it will give our souls a sense of sustenance so sorely needed to know that on Monday night, our friends, our partners and ally at Timothy Eaton are hosting an event intended to educate Torontonians about anti-Semitism. It has purposefully not been advertised in our congregation because the intention is for non-Jews to do the learning. With over 800 registrants so far, as of before Shabbat, it's safe to say the word is out. And so we say, Hamatzi lechem min haaretz, May we seek and be privileged to be part of partnerships that bring forth only goodness from the earth in our own day, based on the ingredients of clarity, compassion, trust, respect, healing, and a shared vision for building bridges. Can you hear Ratzon? May this be God's will. Shabbat Shalom.